Before I begin this review, there are two things I forgot to mention in the Heroes of Might Magic review. The first is that there is an autosave feature, which can be turned on and off. The second is that there is a map editor, which allows you to create your own maps, which you can upload and share with friends. And for that, I apologize. In addition, I am going to boost Heroes of Might Magic score from a 3 to a 3.5 out of 5. With that said, enjoy this next review. Heroes of Might and Magic 2 The Succession Wars is the next game in the Heroes of Might and Magic series. The game was developed by New World Computing and published by 3DO with a release date of October 1st, 1996. In expansion, The Price of Loyalty was released shortly after in 1997. The game was re-released as Heroes 2 Gold in 1998. The Troubles all began three years ago with the passing of the old king, Lord Iron Fist. The king left two sons, Roland was good, kindly, and honorable, while Archibald was not so good. Traditionally, the choice of the heir falls to the royal seer, but he died in a tragic boating accident. His successor's luck was no better, with Frederick falling out of a window, Robert slain by a dragon, and Johann dying of food poisoning. Archibald accused Roland of murdering the Sears and issued a proclamation against Roland. Fearing for his life, Roland fled the place for his castle in the west. With Roland gone, Archibald was able to influence the new royal Sears decision. The Seer chose Archibald and Archibald crowned himself king the next day. And so the war for succession began. The price of loyalty is in canon to the first game. Now that we got the plot out of the way, let's get into the game. This time, however, the game has new mechanics that start in this game. And boy, does this game have a lot to cover. First thing you'll notice is that you now have secondary skills that you can level up in addition to primary. For example, the knight starts with advanced leadership. As they level up, they can pick from one of two random skills. While on the topic of morale, it adds a few new features. Living creatures only get morale, while the undead don't, which makes sense. There are 14 skills out there, but you can only have 8 skills per hero, and each can be leveled up 3 times. I should point out that there is one skill in particular that's only available to a select few and I'm talking about necromancy. Keep in mind what skills your hero has in order to maximize their potential. You don't want to have a barbarian who has limited magic skills. Since I'm blending in the hero classes with skills, let's talk about the two new hero classes. The good wizard has the highest potential as a spellcaster and has access to more spells than any other class, while the evil necromancer has the power to resurrect slain allies in combat as skeletons. And to add all this, there are a ton of combinations to choose from, regardless of which hero class you pick. Speaking of which, now you can pick which hero class you want. Just like in the first and all other games, each has their own strengths and weaknesses, which remains unchanged. The game's strongest feature is that you can upgrade your creatures. But one thing I don't get is why you can only upgrade most, but not all of them. In addition to the wizards and necromancers creatures, there are now more neutral creatures. There are the four elementals, fire, water, earth, and air, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. The Medusa has a chance to petrify their target and keep them there as long as she doesn't move. But you still can't recruit ghosts. The graphics, while still cartoony for the most part, aren't as bright or vivid as in the first game. The towns themselves also got a makeover, and each town looks like its own town instead of a copy and paste look. It may look like a lot, but there's still more to cover. Stick around for part two. <laughs> 